Welcome to New Zealand for round number one of the 1966 Tasman Championship. Uh, this is video three in the 1966 season in my playthrough of racing that year for Richie Axelson. Uh, and it brings us to New Zealand for the start of the Tasman Championship. For those of you that don't know, the Tasman Championship is a great historical part of Formula One history. It really was the off-season championship for Grand Prix racing. Uh, I believe starting in 1964 and continued for quite a while, but especially in the late 60s, this was the place to catch Grand Prix racing outside of Europe. Uh, and it was a championship that took place every year at the very start of the year over a series of weeks, usually had about eight races in it. It would take the first half in New Zealand and the second half in Australia and then crown a champion of this Tasman series. Uh, and many of the Formula One drivers and teams would come to compete along with some locals from the area. And so in 1966, uh, this series was dominated by the BRM team. And it's quite interesting because the BRM team uh, was, as with everybody else, upgrading their engines for the start of 1966 uh, and chose, instead of getting an entirely new power plant, chose to just bore out their 1.5 liter engines from the uh, 1965 and before seasons. And so they ended up with roughly a two liter engine. But I think uh, for some odd reason, maybe the uh, you know preparedness of the other drivers or just the fact that uh, their engines were pretty solid for the early part of the 60s they were able to dominate this championship uh, no small doing as well the Lotus team would come out to these championships uh, and Jim Clark just had a terrible run at it he did win one race but uh, had mechanical failures and just about every other one of them I think the source I was reading cited this was the darkest spot in Jim's uh, illustrious career this 1966 uh, season for the Tasman series. So uh, I'll bring up the calendar 1966 season just like I was saying eight rounds first four will take place in New Zealand second four will take place in Australia and we're starting with the first round the New Zealand Grand Prix at Pukekohe uh, and it's important to note not all eight of these circuits exist, unfortunately, for Grand Prix Legends, or really many sims uh, for that matter. And so I've got a few stand-in tracks, and Pukekohe happens to be one of those, racing at a circuit called Ibla, I believe, and it's a fictional circuit, uh, but it's been redone graphically a bit to look more like a New Zealand track. There's a few tracks I could have used to do this. I think this one replicates close enough what Pukekohe has as far as a circuit, and so I thought it'd be a good place to start the championship, it seems like uh, the popular choice to run in these Tasman series. So not a real circuit. There'll be a couple others along the way that unfortunately uh, won't be real, but I think folks will enjoy the choice of circuit and it'll emulate this preseason atmosphere that the Tasman series really was. Uh, and so this New Zealand Grand Prix was run on January 8th, just a week after that South African Grand Prix that we just did. So uh, quite the trek to get from South Africa to New Zealand. Imagine you have to fly everything all the way over there and it was won by Graham Hill for BRM. Jim Clark had mechanicals in this one as well and something really interesting is that Jack Brabham did not attend uh, these races uh, in New Zealand and Australia until the last two rounds in Australia uh, which is very interesting to me. I couldn't find out why he didn't exactly attend them. It must be just preparing the cars. Same reason you didn't see uh, Ferrari here this season although they did race the Tasman series for many years um, and, and some of the other British teams you didn't really see the Brabham team. Everybody was struggling to get the cars ready. Lotus made it out, a lot of mechanical failures. BRM made it out uh, and luckily had really solid cars and that won them the championship overall. Last big thing to note, uh, this would not be possible at all without the awesome folks at the Sim Racing Mirror Zone and specifically Chris, uh, one of the modders over there. This is a uh, updated version of the Tasman 1966 mod, part of a series. I believe they're doing the whole championship through the 60s uh, with new mods. And so I got a bit of a preview version of this. There is a car set out there for those interested who wanna race these types of cars, but this is a race by race accurate version of the uh, Tasman series. So we'll have the different entries that did compete in each race. Uh, and it's absolutely amazing. It's beautiful looking mod. 
write physics for the cars uh, and so be testing it out throughout this series it is a beta version he told me but uh, just from what I've seen of it it's very very good so excited to try this out so I'll take a quick look at the circuit it's a very simple circuit um, and it's actually I believe a reversed version of another fictional circuit or something similar to that but not too many turns it's actually around an airfield which is quite common for circuits uh, from this time in New Zealand and uh, the last section of it's super fun a lot of cameras on some of these corners so uh, quite a bit different than Pukako is actually but um, I think it's it's still a fun track to race at and a good one to open our little series at uh, we'll be doing just 10 laps today which is much shorter than I would want to do a race I think 10 laps will leave us wanting a lot more however that's proportional to what I've been doing the whole season and I think once you get to Monaco and, and Spa and those other Nürburgring uh, the big Grand Prix you'll notice just how how much of an endurance those events are compared to other races of the time. Uh, we're doing the long distance and the real uh, Pukekohe race, the New Zealand Grand Prix, was a pretty short race overall. I think it was just about 70 miles. Um, so this one will be a short one, just a little taste of racing in Australia, but we do have points on the line. Just like in Formula One, we'll be scoring points for the top six, uh, but no point for fastest lap as far as I can tell. And just like they like to do in the times, there'll be some drop races. So within the first half of the season and second half of the season, we'll be dropping one race a piece. So this could afford you to miss a race, could afford uh, me to have a bad race but hopefully overall I'll be scoring points the whole way through and can maybe fight for that Tasman championship. Uh, I'll be driving the BT11, got my BT11 shipped here, same engine the 2.5 liter Climax uh, but compared to the competition it should be a little closer, uh, no Jack Brabham yet to uh, ruin what I've got, maybe I can talk him into providing me one of those shiny Repco engines for later, later in the season uh, but those BRMs are going to be tough to beat. Take a quick look at the uh, starting grid here for today's race. So Graham Hill got the pole uh, as he would do in real life with Jim Clark alongside and Spencer Martin rounding out the front row. I believe a local driver driving a Brabham car. Jim Palmer and Jackie Stewart starting on the second row. Jim Palmer is racing uh, with a Lotus, but uh, I believe he's a local entry who uh, who got a Lotus to race, maybe one of the older versions. I'm starting in the third row alongside Dennis Marwood and Leo Gihonahan, if I can pronounce that correctly, uh, a couple other locals. But you'll see Frank Gardner's in here as well. Um, and, and so we got a few really high-class drivers, a bunch of local guys. Makes for a very interesting grid, and the spirit of the series is just so much fun. So why don't we get started with this, the 1966 New Zealand Grand Prix. So here we are on the grid, just a few rows back, but I've got all the quick guys right in front of me here. Flag is up, down, and we're underway. Oh, trying not to get caught behind these guys, we'll head to turn one. We've got a car on the inside, car on the outside, so we'll head into the corner. Oh, getting sandwiched there. So one car able to get around me off the line. So now we'll come through a pretty fast third gear. Right-hander will set us up for the first straightaway. This is the shorter of the two. Up to fifth gear, we'll come up to a very challenging kink because right after it, we got to get hard on the brakes. Take it a little easy on the first lap here. Down to fourth gear, down to third. Oh, a car wagging a bit. Down to second, we'll come hop over a runway and then hard on the accelerator, so we'll get onto the back straightaway and try to use all the revs I can to stick with these guys. Up to fifth gear in the slipstream. So we'll come through another fast kink. This will set us towards a bowl-shaped corner. A lot of camber here. Left-hander, third gear back up to fourth and then into the last corner, series of corners, it's really a double apex there, try to get a good run on the cars down the front straight away. So, first lap, I think I lost one position there off the line, or really was side by side. Well, coming into T1 though, these two in front battling, I think that's Palmer and the other Lotus, and Marwood in front of me. Hard on the throttle then, will come through the kink. A 
Oh, Amaro runs a little wide, hopping over the runway. A lot of oversteer on the exit, but trying to get as much power down as I can for the long straightaway. So I'll take a look at my pit board this time by, but I think I must be around where I started. Through the fast kink. Down to third gear, Marwood runs wide. It's gonna let me close in a little bit on him. Try to maximize my exit here for the front straightaway. Oh, just touching him there. Down to second gear. This circuit you can use that curbing on the edge to help you in some places and in other places it would absolutely hurt you like in this kink up here it's basically a ditch on the inside of the circuit which is what makes it so difficult but definitely prevents you from cutting locking it up a little bit there as I head over the runway in a tight battle with these guys but Marwood's got me covered so far I wasn't able to catch the pit board last time by because I was side by side, but we'll look at it this time. The laps are going to tick down super quick here. It's such a short lap. Down a third, try not to over rev it coming in, but it gets the car much more planted. Oh, understeering that time through. We'll take a look at the pit board here. So P7 with seven laps to go. I need one more spot to get some points. Oh, as Marwood tries to look up the inside, he weaves to the outside. I need to get around this guy. There we go, side by side with him. So we'll head into the second corner. Try not to make contact, but want to hold the position there. Oh, so able to make the outside pass. Now try to get a couple good corners here across the airfield so that I pull away from him before the straightaway. Down a fourth, down a third, down a second, hard on the brakes, try not to lock it up. Get a strong exit. I think that'll be just enough to stay in front of him. So now I'm behind Palmer in the Lotus, the older of the two Lotuses. fourth this time. Maybe that'll be a little quicker here. Try to just get as much as I can out of the circuit. So six laps to go, just getting to halfway. Closing in on Palmer here. If you were really daring, you might be able to get a pass done here, but I don't want to uh, end Richie's career early, so we'll avoid doing that if we can. So I've pulled out a little bit on the guys behind, and I'm right with Palmer here, although he's pretty quick on the straightaway. I think up front the BRMs are gone pretty much. Down a fourth for this fast corner. Pulling in on Palmer, I'm right on him now. Oh, power slide through the final corner, right in the slipstream. So we'll head down to T1. Don't want to outbreak myself. Oh, he squeezes me so much. Locking it up a bunch of times there. He's gonna run a little wide on the exit, but we might have touched just barely. That could have been my wheels locking up though that I felt. So Palmer not wanting to let me go. I can't blame him racing for Lotus as a local must be quite the opportunity. So we'll come down to the airfield corner. Up 
through fifth gear. Pretty close to Palmer this time. Come down on my favorite turn. It reminds me of ovals and <laughs> closing in so much. Nowhere to pass through here. Just gonna wait for that front straightaway, but hopefully I can get a better exit this time. A little bit better, we'll come up the inside. Oh, and it's gonna be a repeat of last time through here. See if I can maybe do what I did to Marwood to him. Oh, he's a little bit quicker there. So running out of time, certainly to get any more positions after Palmer here. Oh, and he's very slow there, almost running into the back of him. Have to lock it up, go into safe mode. Whoa, I'm missing my gear. Ah, first one of the season. That's in the worst spot possible too. Luckily it didn't blow the engine, I don't see oil behind me just yet. Hold together for a couple more laps here. Down a third this time, see if I can really hug the apex. Close back up on Palmer. I just need for him to have a little bit of a bobble here in the final corner. Oh, he ran quite wide. Not as close this time though, so only three laps to go. I am in the points, but I want more points than just one. He ran very wide that time, able to get alongside and <laughs> around him. I didn't think I was going to get past him before the corner. Luckily, able to take the apex. So Palmer had enough. A good battle for a few laps there, but happy to get around him. We'll see if I can hold this lead. Oh, locking up a little bit onto the runway, oh, touching the dirt. But luckily, able to hold on to it. That was very sketchy. So got a little bit of a lead on him here, but I can see the other cars too had pulled up on us from all our shenanigans battling back and forth. So have to try to get a good end of the lap here to keep this distance, maybe grow it a little bit. Just a few more laps to go. Should be up into P5 now. The guys ahead, very far up there. Not the best last corner, but I think it was better than Palmer. Down a second gear then for T1, <laughs> using a lot of that slip angle to slow the car down. I got Dunlop tires on the car here for these races, and I'm punishing them quite a bit. through the kink then. Down a third, down a second, head over the runway, still sketchy every single time. Understeering a bit there, Ooh, onto the dirt just a little bit. Still having to push quite hard just to make sure I stay in front of Palmer here and see him just in my mirrors there, closing up ever so slightly, but it won't be quite enough for him to get me. Just flip the car through here, get as far as you can to the outside, then pull it on in for the last corner. I missed both of those cues. Just one more lap to go then in P5. so much there, understeer. It's all about how you enter the corner. I could probably work on my setup a little bit more to get that understeer out of it. But did not have a lot of time after I came from South Africa. Oh, Palmer right there, but I'm able to get a good exit down the back straightaway for the final time here.
just guarding the inside a little bit. Now we'll go through the kink, set my eyes forward. There's no way he's gonna pass here unless he does something absolutely chaotic. Through the fast sweepers, slide it out wide, down low. And there I see the checkered flag, Ooh, and that's one hard fifth place. But such a good battle with Palmer and Marwood. This may not be Pukoki, the actual circuit, but it uh, was a very good track. I'm very impressed with this circuit, being a fictional circuit, to have such a good flow. All it takes is a good track, and uh, you can have some great racing. But some of these S-curves back and forth allow you to pass quite well. Watch all the field stream by. But I think I got fifth position there, so I'll have to go take a look at the results. So there it is, the final results, and Jim Clark gets the win in his Lotus, so it held together for this race, unlike real life. Spencer Martin coming away with that second place, so able to stay up there with the quick guys in his Brabham. And then Graham Hill and Jackie Stewart, the two BRMs, fighting as well. So the top four there, all within about five seconds of each other. Jim Clark, though, four-second lead, so it was a good battle for second, nonetheless. Uh, and there I am in fifth place, Richie Axelson. So I'll pick up two points from this. Jim Clark's gonna come away with the nine for the win. Uh, but overall, really, a really good race. I'm very excited to do this, this short championship with the eight races. Should be able to fly right through it, but it'll be some good, good battling. So from here, we're gonna head over to the Levin circuit. And I believe that is one that exists for uh, Grand Prix Legends show. So it should be a good show, but thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all again next time.